Welcome back, everyone. Hey, looks like we're going to be flying off to the next session of the day entitled Empowering the Economic Sectors with Drone Tech Adoption. We have a huge panel with us today. Moderating this session is Soma Sundram Nagapan, the Head of Strategy, Planning and Special Projects of Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, MDEC. Soma's key role is to develop, recommend, and oversee the implementation of policies, strategies, initiatives, and programs that will lead to the verification of the usage of big data analytics, Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence in the private sector, and catalyze the adoption and usage of these technologies in the public sector, as well as build the supporting ecosystem of these technologies in Malaysia. With this, I pass it over to you, Soma. All right. Thank you, Hasul. Good morning, everyone. Uh, glad to have you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hope you guys had your uh, mid-morning coffee. Uh, we are here today to discuss about the adoption of drone technology or drone tech in short. Uh, drone tech has become a talk of the town here in Malaysia, where while there's a lot of talk, there's also a lot of queries and concerns regarding what is actually available here in Malaysia, uh, what are the challenges, and who should the potential adopters uh, talk to. If these are your questions, then you have come to the right webinar. We have, uh, as you can see, we have assembled a fantastic panel comprising a broad swath of the uh, drone tech ecosystem that will ha help you answer some of these questions or, and, and many more. Okay, we have panelists coming from the regulator side, the ecosystem builders, to talent development, to the solution providers here today. Uh, we also have someone joining us all the way from the UK. Craig, thank you for joining us. Uh, without further ado, uh, let me dive uh, into introducing you to our esteemed panel uh, for today. From the regulator side, we have uh, Captain Akila from the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia. And uh, from the uh, global technology consulting side, we have Craig Roberts, uh, all the way from uh, PwC UK. Uh, ecosystem builders, we have Encik Mohamad Safwan Mohamad Zawri from uh, Malaysian Global Innovation and Creativity Center, better known as MAGIC. We also have Wan Mohamad Farhan from Iskandar Investment Berhad. We also have Tengku Mohamad Azrul Tengku Azhar from Futurize. And on the talent development side, we are fortunate to have Datuk Sri Ganesh from SG Education Group, as well as Captain Ling Leong Ken from AASIA Drone Academy. Uh, and finally, but not least, uh, from the solution provider side, from the, uh, uh, the, the ecosystem side, we also have Dr. Xian Li, uh, CEO and founder of Alpha Swim. Okay, so let's go on to the panel discussion. So in lieu of me reading out everyone's CV one by one, I'm going to invite uh, each of the panelists to actually talk about themselves. Uh, so they'll actually give a brief background of themselves as, as well as explain uh, their organization's role towards developing a vibrant drone tech ecosystem. Okay, as uh, can I invite Captain Akila? Thank you, Soma. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, everyone. Uh, before I begin, I would like to thank you guys for hosting this event. I would say uh, this is the biggest number of panelists I have ever attended before. Um, I am previously an airline pilot with AirAsia on the Airbus fleet and currently the head of the US unit. The US unit is under Flight Operations Division. The drone team, or formerly known as Drone Task Force, was established in 2019. Uh, however, earlier this year, due to the expansion required of the team, the US unit is established. The regulatory responsibility of civil aviation technical matters is vested in CAM. CAM's main role is to contribute to the development of Malaysia's civil aviation technical sector and many to comply with IQO standard as to keep aviation safe, secure, and efficient. Among the key, uh, CAM's key function is to regulate, facilitate, and promote the nation's aviation aerospace industry as well as to ensure that the national international obligations of Malaysia in matters relating to civil aviation can be carried out. And the universal safety and security standards and requirements in civil aviation are implemented, complied with, the, with and well maintained with ICAO. Um, if you see the organization structure of the US unit, it is organized into three major functional areas, which is policy and regulations, operations and readiness and technology and partnership. With that in mind, in line with CAM's key function amongst the US unit job description is to enable growth and integration of unmanned aircraft system, technologies advance safe unmanned civil aviation and protect civil aviation operations against irresponsible users of these technologies by ensuring 
U.S. unit fulfills their responsibilities. We also promote safe operations of unmanned system through development of progressive policies and regulatory framework. And we got to sense and evaluate key emerging trends and technologies that are shaping the future of unmanned system and develop strategies to catalyze innovation and growth of unmanned system industries. Thank you, Soma, a bit of CAM and myself. Right, thank, thank you, thank you, Captain Aguila. Uh, over to Craig Roberts from uh, PwC UK. Craig, over to you. Thank you, uh, sorry for the delay there. Uh, so I'm Craig Roberts from PwC. My background is startups. Uh, I've been the chief exec of two. Uh, one was a robotics inspection company in Texas, which I sold way back in 2010. And the other one more relevantly for this particular discussion uh, was a drone company called Cyberhawk, which is uh, along with, uh, I guess, Aerodyne from Malaysia, one of the top three uh, global drone service providers uh, in the world. I was there from 2012 to 2016, which is very much the, the birth of the commercial drone industry. Uh, and just uh, checking my notes, I see that we did a, a flare inspection for Shell Sarawak way back in 2013. So uh, that's, a, a, which I'm kind of a veteran, I guess, in terms of the industry. Uh, in terms of what I do in PwC, so ever since I left the uh, startup world, I've become, been a drone consultant. And in PwC, we have um, four main offerings for drones. I'm going to cover three of those here. Uh, one is in audit. So we actually use drone, drones to... Uh, if you like, check the homework of our audit clients for stockpile volumes. Uh, so if our client reports volume X for some stockpiles of, say, coal, we will fly a drone and compare the volumes to make sure that we accept their numbers. So that's the audit use of drones. So we're very frequent users of drones there. Uh, we also use drones for digital transformation. And this is uh, essentially working with our clients uh, to ensure that um, uh, drones are not just embraced because the technology is considered to be cool or exciting, but actually there's some real grit there. There's a genuine business benefit which integrates with business as usual. Uh, what we find in the industry is a systemic issue that there's too much focus on flying the drone and capturing the data and not enough focus on analytics and seamless integration with business as usual and the back-end system. If you don't have that seamless integration, you don't get the pool that you expect and the drone solutions are never quite as effective as you might anticipate. And the third, uh, one of our four buckets of service that I'm gonna to mention today is thought leadership. Very overused phrase in the consultancy world, but what we do in the UK is we spend a lot of time with government driving policy that grows UK drone adoption. And so uh, we spent a lot of time, and uh, I see Safan's on the call, we've had a few conversations about this over the years. Uh, we spent a lot of time with the government trying to say, okay, how do you create a pool for drone services in the UK? What are the barriers to growth? How do you generate real momentum in terms of the UK drone economy? And so we're heavily involved and plugged into and influencing uh, through things like economic and socioeconomic reporting and also participation in the policy setting uh, just to try and drive the growth of the UK drone economy. But, uh, you know, spoiler alert here, the key thing is not the drone service providers, no offense to any drone service providers on the call, you're very important. But if you want to grow your drone economy, you've got to create pool in the sectors that will actually buy and benefit from the drone services. That's where the, the pool and the generation comes from. So we tend to focus there and then assume that we can pool the drone service vision uh, along with that. I'll stop there. That's probably more than enough at this stage. Right. Thanks. Thank you, Craig. Uh, let's move on to the ecosystem builder side. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Safwan from Magic. Safwan, over to you. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, uh, MDAC, for inviting me. Uh, certainly, when I saw Craig is joining, I said, like, wow, okay. First of all, it's a very early morning for Craig all over from the UK. But then again, you know, I, I look at all, these are all my colleagues already, yeah? So, like, Captain Akila, Dato Sri Ganes, you know, Farhan. Previously, we probably meet uh, twice a year. Now I think I'm meeting them almost every week. <laughs> Formally, informally, via WhatsApp, via email, you know, they're having a lot of chat. So, you know, I, I just got excited because it, it's it's rare. And thank you so much for, for assembling such a, 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 a good uh, a, a rep of, of panels. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Safwan. Uh, I'm from MAGIC, Malaysia Global Innovation and Creativity Center. Yeah, we're based in Cyberjaya, Malaysia. Our core is a capability development for startups, technology, as well as social, uh, technology startups, social startups. Uh, we've been doing that since uh, uh, well, seven years already uh, altogether. 
Uh, but apart from that, I have a couple of hats which I'm wearing. One is, the, of course, the capability development under Magic Academy. Uh, but also, uh, last year, Magic was entrust, uh, given the, the responsibility to lead the Secretariat for the National Technology Innovation Sandbox or Sandbox. Yeah, uh, Craig, I mean, our various discussion before yeah, has gone to a, a Sandbox initiative by the, uh, the government of Malaysia. Um, so those, that is uh, what we do at MAGIC. So of course, uh, on the panel of the Secretariat, we have Tunku Azro here as well. He, he will talk from a reg <coughs> sorry, regulation side. Um, but um, later on, maybe I'll share a bit more about Sandbox, what happens in the Sandbox, how we, uh, how we work with uh, Captain Akila, you know, how we keep her on toes every night. You know, we, we make sure that she doesn't get enough sleep. Uh, we work with Farhan as well, yeah, uh, in order to 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 bring life to the sandbox in in uh, Iskandar. Yeah, so really excited. I'll pass it back. You know, we'll keep the keep it short, and uh, I'll share more later. Thanks, right. Omar. Thanks, thanks, Afwan. Uh, over to our next uh, uh, panelist from the ecosystem builder side, uh, Farhan from Iskandar Investment Berhad. Farhan. Hello, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, again, uh, similar uh, with everyone, I want to extend uh, my gratitude uh, to MDEC team, Soma, Navin, and the rest for inviting me to join this exciting uh, long line of panelists who I admire and, and have so much respect for. Uh, and, and as they are the ones developing the Malaysia drone technology ecosystem industry for the past few years. And uh, my name is Farhan, and I represent IRB Ventures, uh, which is a subsidiary of Iskandar Investment Berhad. And uh, together with various partners like Magic, MDAC, Futurize, MTDC, DHL, CAM, and even SG Academy, so we are building this drone and robotics zone or DRZ Iskandar. It's an ecosystem uh, enabler to support and gather local and regional drones and robotic companies you know, to develop, to test, and to commercialize their drones and robotic products and solutions. Uh, briefly about myself, uh, so I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer by training and background, and I spent almost eight years of my working career in the oil and gas industry, and that was where I first encountered uh, with the drone technology. Because back then, uh, our organization wanted to identify better and safer ways to do certain operations and in, in, a, in, a maintain, in maintenance. And back then, I think it was 2015, 2016, we had companies like Cyberhawk, uh, Sky Futures, who are partnering with local vendors doing pilots. And I thought to myself, you know, this is a solution and something definitely that, that I, I want to venture into. And, and true enough, uh, I briefly started up my own company to provide drone solutions to my clients. And I remembered, you know, trying to explain the business to a potential angel investor. I had to show them this, uh, uh, the Transformers 1 video clip. You guys remember the, where the Raptor drone flies in to do recon to help the field agents figure out what was going on, right? And nowadays, everyone knows and potentially owns a drone at home. And it gets people excited. And we realized that the market potential from our point of view, uh, back in 2018, when I worked uh, with MDAC, we found out that you know, drone tech industry has companies, great companies like Aerodyne, Polar Drone, Ophotech, Melversands, Pulsar UAV, who are developing and scaling up. Which is why I think we banded together with few early partners to start up the first Malaysia drone tech uh, ecosystem initiative. And I think the rest, as they say, is history. So I'll stop there and I'll let the rest of the panel share the experiences as well. And I'll share more about the, the RZ Iskandar uh, ecosystem later in our discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Farhan. Looking forward to that. Uh, and the next ecosystem builder side is uh, Tengku Muhammad Azrul from Futurize. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Soma. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning. I'm Tunku Azro from Future Senior Bahad. Uh, we are the company slash agency that's still fairly young in this ecosystem. But uh, I would like to echo what uh, Safwan and Farhan mentioned back in 2018. Uh, nobody is looking at this drone tech ecosystem uh, seriously. So we started, we, we, we gathered together, we met CAM, we looked at how can we do that. I think that is where the role of, of Futurize came in, where we, we were mandated by the government of Malaysia to be the driver for National Regulatory Sandbox. Uh, when we talk about National Regulatory Sandbox, it's for the anticipatory, progressive and inclusive regulatory framework. So a little bit about me, I'm, I think 
I'm a system engineer by training. Uh, been into IT, but uh, uh, interested into looking at the new innovation. We're looking at uh, smart city and whatnot uh, in urban development. So I think uh, we may see how can we participate better in 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 getting the innovation being implemented. Uh, in the ecosystem with a proper guideline and proper regulation that uh, we can have. So we're going to be supporting our regulator like CAM to look at how can we uh, test that technology. I think over to you, Soma. Right. Thanks. Thank right. Thanks, Azrul. Okay, so now let's uh, talk, talk, talk to the talent development representatives and the panelists. Uh, we'll start with Dato Sri Ganesh from SG Education Group. Over to you, Dato. Hi, um, thank you, Mr. Soma. Hi, everybody. I'm Sri Ganesh. Uh, I would say I'll summarize this. Okay, my contribution are focused in three core areas in the digital economy. I would say on the industrial Internet of Things, data science, and of course, drone technology. My businesses focuses on development of specialized talents for the digital economy. I would say the new digital economy. My foundation lies in TVET. Uh, I believe in TVET is the way forward on building these uh, talents. Founded in 1999 as a premier TVET institution across Asia, our services encompasses of broader preparation of skilled workforce, developing academic and technical skills, and providing solutions as well from the enrollment to employment. I believe uh, as traditional skills are yet to be supplanted, yet require reinforcement. I'm working to enhance our national workforce with skill sets that future proof them. Now let's come for the talents of the drone technology itself. I'm spearheading an initiative to create talents ranging from drone field applications to drone data services. This is to ensure that we produce highly priced drone operators for the drone uh, economy, but not the drone labors, right? Now, as you all know that the drone hype started the last four or five years, right? When we have a lot of conferences and all that, that hype started. But in reality, it started way back. Uh, earlier than that, when RC exists, that means the things on drones exist as well, right? Where you can see those days, those drone FPV races, which are like the mud rumpets of the drone fraternity, to be flying around and all that, nobody to regulate them. What we actually did is that way before, um, of course, a lot of complaints have gone to CEM as well. So while they're putting the, the uh, bits and pieces, yeah, we got them certified under the National Occupational Skills Standard. Uh, to be a certified trainer in the drone vertical. That means we got the mud room paid to regulate them properly mm. so they can structure it. And for, for your kind information out there, of the, I mean the viewers, uh, this NOS National Occupational Skills Standard, which produces the SKM Level 2 and Level 3, at early stage was created by the industry, the association, and also by the CEM as well. Right? So uh, the story goes like this. We are the first Malaysian drone academy to obtain the full uh, accreditation in SKM Level 2 and Level 3, which leads us to secure the Malaysian Book of Records when it comes to skill development in, uh, 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 in talent, uh, drone technology talent. Moving forward, we link, we link the collaboration with the Institute for Drone Technology and Center of Drone Excellence in Australia in way back in 2017 because we have a, a best uh, existing model, uh, best practices were acquired from there. And uh, we engage with them for technology and knowledge transfer for efficient drone UAV training in Malaysia, adapting to the real environment the, as per the industry uh, requirement. The training facilities made available now where we, we ought to call it the Malaysian Center of Drone Excellence. If we call it MyCode. This we started off in Putrajaya due to restriction of the CGSO and so forth. We have actually given an opportunity by the IIB and Iskandar. All right where we have actually set up a drone test site, a complete ecosystem where um, this was uh, initiated uh, as a flying site in Iskandar and a complete drain, uh, drone training mechanism in terms of UTM and we were lost in progress. You know? uh, each training program, uh, only industry um, certified training with endorsement from uh, Institute Drone Technology Australia, from SKM, and my code, and of course, now we are striving to get the approval from CM, uh, of course. And um, we understand um, the job market for all industries are little steep at the moment, right? So, what we did was we created a path for freelancers to generate an in, uh, income, uh, whereby we introduced the drone geek portal, 
If you go to dronegeek.asia, you'll understand that uh, we have a portal for drone freelancers. Instead of getting them a job, we get the freelancers on board where people look for uh, projects and so forth can engage them according to the demographic area. In short, uh, I would say that we got those retrained to subscribe for a fully industry supported training program. Those industry players are key players in the drone vertical, for instance, Melville Sands, uh, leader in fixed wings operation and including various drone uh, surveillance exercise. We engage dronology as well. They are pioneer in precision agriculture, uh, which coincide with the drone tech now. Right? Most research engagement will be with Mata Aerotech. Uh, we have actually placed to place 20 drone operators there to precisely to be in the drone uh, precision agriculture vertical. In the last two years, uh, I would say two and a half years, we have, pro we have trained close to 200 drone operators out there in various uh, vertical cut across different technologies in the drone economy. Right? We believe, or oh, I strongly believe that there's a technology in place we should create innovators rather than technology consumers. Often in Malaysia, when a new tech reaches the inflection point, we are trapped in the hype at the moment. But in reality, we are invited to become technology consumers rather than innovators. <laughs> this is where we are looking into adding value to ensure that drone talents are trained to be innovators rather than consumers out there. For instance, in the drone tech itself, there's a vast difference between the scope of a drone pilot and a drone operator. A pilot is a competent, uh, is, is a competent guy in flying a drone, which we shouldn't forget that in the drone industry itself, the business workflow requires only 20% of the drone pilot's competency, whereas the balance 80% requires various other competency. Hence, developing a talent in the drone industry should take into consideration various requirements of the industry, not focused towards the hype that it created. Mm. Uh, another example will be the drone delivery services in the urban area. If it materializes, we are going to rely on drone pilots, which is not true, right? Where we need to rely on drone operators to actually manage fully automated drones. So we're not going to have like uh, two, 300 pilots uh, maneuvering the drone all across the, the urban area. So we need to have that in mind, right? right? So uh, yeah, that, that's all about me. So you, I, we have a clear vision in building talent so that um, we don't want to be uh, technology consumers. We want them to be innovators and developers in the uh, drone space in Malaysia. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Dato. Thanks, Dato. Uh, next one, we'll speak to uh, uh, get Captain Ling from Air Asia Drone Academy. Over to you, Captain. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having us uh, in this forum. Uh, it's a true honor to be here. Uh, I must say, of all the panel speakers here, we are probably the most uh, junior, beginner or amateur in that sense. So um, just to share a little bit of a story, how, how we embarked into this journey was uh, one day in one of the uh, management ops meeting, uh, one of the, uh, the senior management manager was say, commenting that, you know, uh, so now we are doing deliveries for our food and the products and so on. So what about the uh, safety of the guys, you know, on the roads? Uh, are we looking into the safety of those, uh, those involved? So, of course, we said yes, of course, we are definitely monitoring it and looking to it. Although some of them are, or majority of them are actually geek workers, but still, of course, uh, we have people is a key in the organization. So we do... Uh, look after in this aspect. So one of the questions was asked that how, how can we um, make it safer or reduce uh, accidents on the road? I think it was sometime last year that it was mentioned that although people are not going out a lot, but road accidents still remains quite high. So therefore the discussion came about that, you know, how, how can we eliminate or really reduce this? So then the, of course the boss is a very uh, technology uh, person. So say, let's look into what can we do? And then someone raised and said, hey Ling, you know, I remember you fly a drone. <laughs> So that's how the conversation started and then, it's it. then we started to look at it that you know what, uh, this is something we need to venture in. Uh, also because of the rising uh, of, the, of the industry. So we said, okay, let's look into it and see what can we do about it. And through a few rounds of a discussion, we realized there are a lot of uh, use that we can adopt uh, drone technology just to serve our own ecosystem uh, within air Asia. So example, delivery is one of them. Um, our farm, quite a few few areas you can look into, even even to our own uh, surveillance and things like that. So at the same time, also we also realize this is opportunity for us to move uh, forward. Uh, one of our vision is to digitize our company as much as uh, possible, and also uh, venture into new new areas that we can uh, 
uh, adapt these new technologies and how we can push uh, Air Asia forward uh, to be a more uh, rather fully digitized company. So at the same time, we also say that, you know what, uh, we also have a lot of people they are currently not doing too much uh, as not as busy as before. Therefore, we also look at the, uh, and so happened there was a, around the same time that the CAM published the new uh, CADs. So look at it, hey, you know, this is something we can do. Therefore, uh, some more discussion will say, look, you know what, I think we should adopt all of this, uh, work together with the industry, learn as much as possible, and also uh, to build up our own uh, training uh, RPTO for that matter. Uh, not just uh, for our own people and also uh, similarly to like all the other industry players to offer these uh, services or options uh, to people uh, in the industry. But we also realize that uh, some of the younger kids, uh, people, they are really excited. They really want to learn and uh, they, they have sometimes, uh, they have probably limited choices uh, in terms of where they want to go. Therefore, we said, you know what, uh, this is something we can do and offer to everyone as well. So that's actually how we started with the RPTO. Of course, uh, adopting drone technology ultimately is uh, mainly the looking into serving our own ecosystem as well as providing uh, whatever services that we may uh, come up with to other players as well. So in general, this is how we started. So uh, quite humbly, I, I must say we still have a lot to learn uh, from everyone. So therefore, once again, thank you for having us uh, in this forum. All right. Thank you, Captain. Uh, so last but not least, uh, let's uh, hear from Dr. Shan Lee. He is the CEO and co-founder Alpha Swift, uh, representing the solution provider side. Go ahead, Dr. Lee. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Shan Lee, CEO and founder of Alpha Swift Industries. We make drones. We build, we design, build, and fly them for various purposes. So recently, we are now embarking in an um, this adventure of getting the drones to fly in the farms. And they are pretty versatile in terms that they are good in data acquisition. You can use the drones to capture data. You can also use the drones to deploy physical goods, for example, pesticides, herbicides. So we are using the drones to help to disperse the fertilizers and pesticides on the farms. This will help to create a better working environment, first of all. And then also we can rely less on the labor and this will address the labor shortage issue. Can also help to increase the food security. Hmm. So I see there's a good future for, for drone applications worldwide. So this is only a very small example of how it could be done in the agricultural sector. So there are still many ways to use drones for, for various purposes. We are also doing drone deliveries. So recently, I'm, uh, we, we, our company is now enrolled in the NTS. Uh, we, are, we are proud to be part of the NTS um, program. We will be doing drone tests in Johor, Medini, together with IIB Ventures it's in, in, it's in the Iskandar region. And we are going to test out our delivery drone system. So that will also help us to establish a, a safety protocol, something that, you know, like a concrete data set to, to show that delivery drone can be done. And then we want to find out the way, uh, a safe way to do it. And we are also looking at building bigger and bigger drones. So we, we want to venture into heavy and heavy cargo and long endurance. So I see the, the, the space in, in the drone industry, there's still a lot to be done and we are building it step, uh, step by step. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Okay, so we have heard from all the panelists, we heard their background, uh, we heard about the organizations, we also heard uh, what are some of their offerings. So now let's actually go into the crux of the matter, adoption. Okay, so right now, uh, uh, I'm gonna ask a two-part question to, to the panelists. Uh, what are the challenges when it comes to, 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 to driving adoption of drone technology? And then uh, how did you guys actually uh, overcome this or help companies uh, overcome the, the adoption challenges? Okay, uh, I'll start with uh, Captain Akila. Thank you, Sipha. Okay, um, I believe, so the main key point is the challenges and how we overcame it. Yep. Okay, um, let's see, for starters, uh, we know that the operators or industry wants to create or do many, many things. And so uh, to enable the drone industry to grow in a conducive and safe environment, 
we in CM believe that we should first tackle the root issue before complementing on authorization for the operations, relating to the US and the likes of it. And in order to create such environment, the industry has to be filled with a vast number of competent operators. Like what Datuk Sri Ganesh said earlier, I would echo that, that the operator needs to have the correct, right US knowledge. This can only be done by achieving by having standardized and competent remote pilot training organization. Hence, we came up with the CAD 6011 Part 1 RPTO. Then after looking at the environment of Malaysia, the landscape and everything, and there is a high demand from the industry on agriculture, then we decided that we should provide also a guideline on the do's and don'ts for agricultural US operations on this. And utilizing an unmanned aircraft system for the purpose of dispensing, like what, the, what Dr. Xian Li has uh, explained earlier, that there is a um, agricultural payload, dispensing of pesticides, or other than dispensing operations, such as surveillance, mapping, and there are actually operations that are looking into cutting the trees even. Okay? And because they were talking about, they want to cut trees, and then they want to talk about um, operators are requesting for beyond visual and of sight, and drone delivery. So we need to create something to maximize the potential of drone technology. So CAD 6011 Part 5 was also introduced. The key point of this CAD is an extensive risk assessment derived from a methodology called Specific Operations Risk Assessment, known as SORA. Of course, if I were to add on further, um, any regulator that you go to, even though we already have published a directives or requirement, let's just say for the manned aviation, um, the traditional manned aviation, and you're try trying to step away from that, then the, the regulator will ask, what's your risk assessment on that? So this whole thing, or anything that is unique, the idea is that there should be a robust risk assessment to cater your operation. Okay? Moving forward, we know that we cannot just stop there. Uh, we knew that we had to also amend our regulations. Okay? And we, had, we have to, once we amend the regulation, we have to add on additional directives to supplement, to supplement the requirement of the regulations in terms of directives and also guidance material. So from the outset, it should be noted that the new regulations will cover all aspects of the operation of unmanned aircraft, um, as opposed to being just aviation safety regulations. Why I'm saying this is because this means that the, while the safety related aspects are clearly of paramount importance, but there are also non-aviation safety related. Mm. Something like privacy data protection, you know, uh, drone has that, not so much on the man aviation, man traditional aviation. So in addition, it should be noted that the safety considerations within the new regulation for unmen are perhaps more overtly defined than that it would be for the man aviation. Um, when we were looking at the regulation as well, the, the key focus is actually always about two things, which is the air race, which talks about the collision of men aircraft and also other men aircraft, and also to the ground race, which is collisions with people or critical infrastructures. So when we were... Um, so the new regulation and its directives will follow a few basic concepts. So that's the key point uh, that we realize that we have to step away from the normal and traditional aviation. Is that this operations needs to be, the new regulation needs to be operation centric instead of saying limitations only. I see. Um, therefore the operation centric, it will focus on the type of the operation conducted and not who, what or why it is being conducted because there is no one on board of the aircraft, the consequences of the incident or accident are purely dependent on where the accident or incident takes place. There would be three types of categories, which is open, specific, and certified. So when we look into this operation centric, uh, we also look into risk space, where if the focus of the operation of the risk of the operation presents a higher risk, so obviously more effort or proof whether um, risk is greater. Mm. Okay. okay, so meaning to say, if an uh, operation um, 
we will not differentiate between a recreational or a commercial operation because the risk is a deciding factor. So I would say these are the challenges that we saw and how we want to implement all of this. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Captain uh, Akila. That's really interesting. Uh, let's uh, call on Craig to understand, you know, as a, a global tech consultant, you know, what are the, the, the challenges that he, uh, that he sees when companies want to do uh, drone tech adoption and, and, and some of the suggestions how they can overcome it. Over to you, Craig. Uh, thanks, so much. Yeah, so I'll try and keep this as, uh, as brief as I can because we can talk about this for many hours. Uh, so the challenges we have are in the following categories. We have societal adoption or acceptance. We have regulation. Uh, we have things like planning permission as we start to move into, uh, I see that Shan Lee mentioned uh, cargo drones. And so we start to require for things like AEM or cargo drones, we require infrastructure. So planning permission and uh, urban planning is key. Uh, then we have ground infrastructure. We have uh, commercial models. We have uh, the data infrastructure. We have unmanned traffic management integration with, with manned. So we have all these things happening. I'm not going to focus on really very many of those because I think the rest of the esteemed panel will cover the more, uh, shall we say, tactical things there. I'm going to talk about what we've learned in the UK. Perhaps there are some, um, some lessons from this that might be of interest. So uh, in PwC um, in 2019, we did a perception study and we asked the question of industry, okay, so why are you not adopting drones at the rate we anticipated? Because uh, when drones first had their, I would say their first blush in the UK, uh, there was a lot of excitement about drones and we thought this is going to be a very steep adoption curve. These benefits are compelling. If I go back to my time in Cyberhawk, uh, we could save uh, $10 million a day by inspecting live flare stacks. And so really compelling use case. And, and so what we found was, okay, well, you know, in oil and gas, which by the way, now is a very mature market. If you have a compelling use case, then the client, you know, the shells, the BPs, the ConocoPhillips, they will pool the services. And if the drone providers are credible, and in the case of oil and gas, this meant they had inspection engineering qualifications, they had offshore qualifications, uh, they could speak the same language, they could do the reports in the format that was required. Then you had this, uh, this, this heady cocktail of, okay, pool from industry and credible drone service providers. So why has the growth not been the same in the other market segments? Well, we, we asked the question. And a lot of this is actually about perception. So if we go back a few years, drones were perceived as, as toys. So my son or daughter has a drone, and you know, you guys are not serious, you're just able to fly drones. And we have this sort of, uh, again, I mentioned uh, systemic issues in terms of lack of focus on data. The other systemic issue was companies being set up and it was, okay, I'm a great pilot. And I have, I mean, I love drones, I think pilots are great. But being a pilot doesn't mean that you have the tools required to credibly sell to industry. And mm. so if you go in there with your drone, I'll give you a couple of examples, I wouldn't name the companies. Uh, you go into an oil and gas company and say, hey, we have this great company, we fly drones, we're experts, and the oil and gas company is convinced you're great pilots, you've got great drones. And then what you give them is 24 hours of video footage of a flare. That is no use, okay? And so what happens is that particular client is then put off drone adoption for two or three years because they say, well, you know, okay, I was Steven Spielberg for 24 hours, but what do I do with this film? And so the key then is understanding exactly what the industry requires. It's very specific. If I take um, examples in Malaysia, Powerline Inspection, which is one of the engines of growth of your, uh, your main drone company in Malaysia, uh, there's a very specific inspection criteria for those power lines. And so the first question is, do we meet those inspection criteria at least as well as the current traditional method? And if the answer is yes, well, how much more efficient is it? And so we find, okay, you must have a credible drone service provider, but you also must have a very solid business case and everything has to be driven from the business benefit. And so if we go through um, some of the, uh, I'll give you some stats here, then I'll wrap up the point because uh, again, I'm sure the rest of the, the esteemed panel will cover the other uh, mechanical elements of this, but uh, we have things like 53% um, of the, uh, the survey said, okay, we, we don't think there's a wide enough understanding of drones in general, so we don't really consider them. So that's just an education point. Um, 52% considered that more drone services would be used if there were more credible drone service providers. So that's the point I made about, you know, having a drone is one thing, having a business, a business plan, a business benefit, actually meeting the specific cr criteria of that uh, market sector is absolutely fundamental. Uh, and in terms of uh, adoption, and I, I, I think I heard a few uh, nods towards this, 50% uh, of the respondents thought that an industry specific qualification would help adoption. So if you're a purchasing person in, 
let's say, a large agriculture uh, consideration, and, and you can go to a drone provider who's got a certificate that says, I am certified to use drones for uh, crop or livestock monitoring or spraying, then you have that sort of assurance that they've got a minimum level of training. And so that example I gave you before with the, uh, the Steven Spielberg 24 hours of video, well, you just bypass that because the, spe the specifics are clear, the spec is clear. So these are the sort of things that we found. But uh, the, on the positive side, the companies who responded to the survey and who had, a, who had actually used drones previously, they, they had a 90% acceptance rate. So what you had is this perception challenge to overcome. It was different by segment. But if you overcame that and actually adopted drones, then the benefits were real and they were very much appreciated. So uh, those are the thoughts I'd leave you with. Uh, one last thing, just to put that into, I guess, a, hopefully a clear picture. Uh, in PwC, we characterize the drone workflow in four stages. We say, okay, there's stage one is permission. Am I legal to fly? Stage two is capture. Okay, what am I going to capture? What's the spec of the capture? Is it images? Is it LIDAR? Stage three is processing, conversion of data into information. That's a good old cliche there. And stage four is sharing. Now, four is the most important stage. And so this is, what is the data I'm going to produce at the end of this workflow? Which client backend systems does this integrate with? How do I get those integrations working? Ideally, it's a seamless API. And then once you understand bucket four, the end of the process, you start and you say, okay, right, I'm now going to design this uh, uh, stage one. Yeah, this is permission, stage two, capture, stage three, processing to make sure that I deliver exactly what the client requires. And you pull that through. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because we found that um, there's a lot of uh, talk about BVLOS. Of course there is. BVLOS, um, again, I'll go back to Dr. Shan Lee there. Uh, BVLOS for cargo drones is very exciting. We've modeled that. It looks like cargo drones can replace traditional air freight and deliver 35% benefit uh, in terms of cost reduction, much more quality and flexibility. So that's a fantastic use case for BVLOS. It makes sense. But what you find is that for inspection use cases, it doesn't always follow that BVLOS is the answer, but you'll just blindly follow BVLOS as an initiative without that business pool if you assume that BVLOS will solve all problems. And so we always say, what exactly does the industry want? What's the business case? And then once you understand that, is it BVLOS? Uh, is it um, EVLOS? Uh, is it autonomy? What is the answer at that point? So I, I will stop there. I could go on, but hopefully there's a few points to, to ponder there. Thanks so much. Hey, uh, thanks, Greg. Uh, really interesting insight there. Uh, before we go on, uh, just for the audience, if you guys have any questions, uh, please post it in the uh, Q&A chat box. Uh, we'll have a, a short Q&A session towards the end and we'll address them there. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the ecosystem builder side. We're going to ask them what is their experience in terms of the challenges they face when it comes to adoption and, and what they have done to overcome them. We'll start with Safwan. Hi, thanks, Omar. I can spend hours listening to Craig uh, <laughs> and I would love to. I think you've, you've done him an injustice. You should give him a, a slot on its own. Yeah. So I think I consulted Craig a lot in uh, early days of, of coming up, uh, setting up the ecosystem for drone uh, in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, looking at model in terms of what the UK has done and then spending off to look at other countries like Japan. Yeah. And um I think he has definitely gone beyond just uh, taking photographs and wedding videos, yeah? And uh, as what Craig has mentioned, it's not about you know, the 24 hours of footage, it's actually what do you want to use those footages for? Uh, identifying cracks, uh, rust, yeah? uh, and so forth, depending on the industry. In fact, uh, I recall, you know, the, the story uh, began uh, uh, earlier on. I, I stumbled across this PwC study, um, Craig, you would probably know it. I think everybody would know it here. Everybody here would know it in 2016, uh, clarity from above. And uh, there was a there, there was a, a figure of 127 billion. I said, that cannot be right. That's crazy. I mean, like taking photos and videos, it can't be 127. Yeah, but uh, I think that the, the, the study has kicked off that, 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 that light bulb moment. Yeah, and because we looked at um, where the application of the technology. So drone is a tool now, yeah? It's, it's what you use the tool for, yeah? And uh, I think back then uh, it was identified, it was going to be uh, infrastructure, uh, agriculture and mobility, yeah? And I think it's still largely true in terms of the category for focus uh, nowadays. Uh, perhaps maybe with the addition, a strong addition of, of agriculture nowadays, yeah? Uh, a lot more uh, on agriculture. And, um, and this is what uh, we are seeing. 
And I would say in terms of when you talk about challenges, I would say that uh, our early days was uh, uh, we love to we love to you know uh, pick up the phone and call Captain Aguila, you know regulation regulation regulation, but it's not about regulation. Um, it's not just about regulation. It's it's not and it's also about talent. Yeah, uh, but at the same time, you know what we are doing at Magic as part of the NTIS is to take a higher view. Uh, when we talk about our sandbox earlier. We we'll try to look at the overall picture. We we'll try to decipher what what are the issues here. What are the right issues? Everybody's saying that you know CEM or, or JUPEM or, or just the regulation you know can't keep up. It's not just in Malaysia. It's everywhere. Yeah, but I think the failure is that the other players in the ecosystem do not take it seriously. Do not see the value of of drone uh, technology um, to or now I, I I call it also as a drone economy coining what PwC mentioned earlier is like, you know, all the sectors of, of production empowered using drones, robotics. Yeah? Uh, I think this is where uh, we do not see. One, it's a very powerful tool, power, powerful enabling technology. Yeah, And if I were to combine some of the studies as well, looking at autonomous, uh, the Gartner hype cycle, it is ready to be scaled up. Yeah, It's, it's something which is Malaysia... Uh, back in in the early days when I, when we were looking at the building this ecosystem, we felt that oh, it can't be that many players, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that's also the start of a story in terms of how I got involved. Uh, I got to know there's this company, yeah, uh, Gopi from MDEC, yeah. Actually, asked, assigned me to say, okay, what do you meet this company? I met them in Dubai. They're doing drones, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. So I met the company and said, okay, the company invited me to an event. I'm receiving an award. So, okay, yeah. And then uh, the award time came. Another drone company came up. I said, hey, can't be. I thought I'm here for this drone company. But so from there, I realized that, okay, the, the, the one inviting me was uh, Kamaro from Aerodyne. The one going up for the first award was actually uh, 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 from Overtech. And then did that actually spurred the, the, the interest to say, there may be more, yeah? So back then, you know, I, uh, um, I work with Farhan, so we start building this ecosystem map, mm -hmm. and we realized that you know, this there's an ecosystem of players, ready players, and the good thing is they're in Malaysia. They are already in their third, fourth, some into their fifth. We have a drone player which almost going into their eleventh year. Yeah. So what does that tell you from a startup perspective? It's you know they passed the two years that 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 valley of that, so they are sustainable. It is uh, an ecosystem built on technology, uh, and uh, we've not picked it up. Yeah, so which is why this is this is very key. It has a it's a it's it's it has potential in terms of building a high value skill. Yeah, and uh, you may list uh, later on here from uh, Dr. Siganes and also uh, Captain Ling. You got pilots, yeah, and you got uh, TVET students and 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 STEM element as well added into it. Mm. But again. Going forward, if you're going to talk about challenge, I think it's about opening more eyes, yeah, to, for people to be aware, for GLCs, MNCs, um, uh, to be aware that there is this potential, yeah, uh, and about using technology, yeah, you can actually broken up into the atomic pieces, and you can see, oh, this one can be applicable in agriculture, in aerospace, in in many areas. So that can that can't be done by one agency alone. And that is definitely not going to be uh, um, 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 possible if you're just looking at it from a regulatory standpoint. Yeah. So that would be one. I think this is one of a good effort, this panel, yeah, to be able to bring the, the information out to the public and those to those who are listening, you know, the, the time is now. Yeah. Um, you start anything and later than today, you'll be late. Yeah. So, and I think that the, the regulation, while they will always still be uh, uh, catching up and that that is normal yeah but the thing is your op the opportunity is here now and you you should jump on it and you should also voice in terms of what are the uh, improvement that needs to be done so that we can assist yeah so just before I close we are based on you know uh, um, the, the the study we are also running our own study which is very specific very focused to Malaysia yeah and we are seeing a, a number of about 50B, yeah, RM, uh, Ringgit Malaysia 50B by 2030, easily, yeah. Yeah, and we're talking about a, a, a job opportunity of close to about 100,000 as well by 2030, high-skilled jobs. 
and, and of course, we, we are going to verify this data further with the means of doing the study. But again, rather than relying on a big, huge figure out there, we are doing one for our own, something that we can share uh, to, for the, all the ecosystem. Yeah, that CAM can use, uh, the education side can use, yeah, the drone players can use as well. Yeah, hopefully, it will be beneficial. Uh, stay tuned, maybe another, maybe one or two months to, to come. Sound, sounds good. Sounds good, Safran. Uh, Farhan, over to you, Iskandar. Based on what you have seen companies over there, what are their challenges and how did they overcome it or what you guys are doing to actually help these companies? Hello? Hi. Uh, thanks, thanks, Omar. Uh, so I think as, as shared by, by Safwan, uh, by Captain Akila, uh, even Craig, I think that there's, there, there, obviously there is a lot of challenges you know, and, and there's a lot of doubts. But again, with all these challenges and doubts, there's definitely a lot of opportunities as well. So I think in, in DRG Iskandar especially, I think this is why our, our core pillars focuses on, on six core things. You know, number one is about the test sites, uh, the workspace for the companies, uh, building and, and accelerator programs, you know, uh, capacity development, uh, talent, uh, events for companies' visibility, and, and, and the policy intervention as well. I'm not going to talk about all of that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get uh, the rest of the panelists to cover on a few because uh, for talent development, I think uh, Dr. Siganes is our partner in developing the talent development ecosystem within the RG Iskandar as well. I'm going to talk more about two things, which is on the test side as well as uh, on the awareness and the visibility. And, and just for everyone's information, uh, we've worked together with uh, Drone Industry Insights as well, and, and we've, we've they, they've, they've, they have informed us, right? Uh, there's this study that was being done and it was last year and, and uh, Drone Industry Insight uh, informed us that Malaysia has the biggest drone services market uh, size and potential uh, within ASEAN with the value of close to 384 million US dollars uh, by 2025. And as mentioned by Safwan, I think uh, the top uh, industry for, for Malaysia uh, that 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 we we may want to focus on is is on agriculture, uh, plantation, uh, energy, telcos. Uh, obviously, you know, drones has been used for map mapping and surveying for the longest time, and and we don't uh, we're not we're not even talking about uh, the the military application of drones. It's just for the commercial sector alone, so the, the 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 market is worth three hundred over million US dollars. You know, within the next five years, so. How do we help our local uh, and, and obviously the regional companies you know, to capitalize on this, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is where, you know, for the test side, you know, to ensure that the end users, you know, uh, understand what the companies built, you know, have some faith, you know, and, 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 and see the potential of, of their solutions. This is what the test sites are for. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we are also to, working together with Magic under the NTIS program, where we are helping the companies to do test pilots and case studies to get the drone solutions and product to be tested at our locations together with regulators, together with the clients to see that their solution works. And then, you know, after a certain period of time, once both parties are agreeable, then, then the, the solution would be able to be adopted in real uh, situation, in, in, in real uh, application. Uh, but again, at this point of time, you know, there are already certain uh, applications that is already being adopted. You know, e even with certain uh, regulatory uh, requirements uh, being put forth, you know, there are already adoption of drone in the agriculture sector, in the uh, telecommunication energy sector. And there are a lot of people already having the right solutions and, and the right products to be pushed into the market. But, uh, some of the companies, they, they, they are not really visible into the eyes of these end users. So what, what do we do? Uh, so from our point of view, so we've built that uh, ecosystem mapping, uh, just as Safwan in, uh, mentioned. So our role as an enabler is to bridge that gap between the demand and, and, and the supply. Uh, so, and, and, and we've been doing that uh, at the moment by uh, engaging uh, all of these drone companies, I think for the past one and a half years and even two years, we've met over like 100 over drone companies locally and, and regionally and even globally to try to get them uh, in touch with the local uh, end users. 
and 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 we've come up with a uh, few programs as well. Uh, and I think uh, within the past few months, we've developed this uh, content program called an initiative called Ignite Iskandar. Mm -hmm. So Ignite Iskandar is is a is an event platform where one of the core focus area industry is on the drone and robotics. And we've gathered almost 700 over uh, participants to come in and understand who's who in the market. And, right. and, and recently we did a, a session together with GSMA as well. And I think a lot of, of the companies are, are available. And I think it's about understanding, you know, what are the available technology out there that can already be adopted? And, and also understand if there is any gap within the technology sector, this is where we, we are going to come in and assist the companies to further develop that solution and get them tested within these uh, test zones that we have developed and work together with our local regulators to help them ensure that they can meet certain requirements so that that solution can get can be adopted within our uh, our, our, our local uh, regulation uh, that, that has been set. All right, I'm, I'm gonna stop there. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get the rest of the panels to share their insights as well. And thanks for that. Interesting stuff again. Uh, Azrul, over to you, Azrul. Challenges. Thanks, Omar. So, so the challenges, but, but uh, I may take it a little bit uh, backward a bit. When we look at the challenges and implementation of technology, I think we are at the uh, sixth wave of innovation. If you're looking at the fifth wave of innovation, it's all about digital networks, software, new media, the, the creation of the new value creation. Lah. But in the sixth wave, we're looking at AI, IoT, robotic, drone, and the clean tech. So I think that's a bit, uh, that's a little bit clear on where we should take this drone tech to, uh, to a new era and to, to implement it easier. Hmm. So when you're looking at the cycle, the cycle of innovation is getting smaller and smaller. Started off in 1800, where we first started to look at the carbon, uh, to, uh, at the manufacturing and whatnot. Now we are at drone and robotic where we're looking at dangerous, boring and repetitive as what Elon Musk said. Lah. Mm. Uh, AI will be replacing the workforce because of that. Uh, dangerous, boring and repetitive is like uh, a clone, clone army lah, in Star Wars. So <laughs> when we're looking at drone, we're looking at how can we implement the technology in a safer environment, conducive and safer environment. Uh, everyone mentioned earlier, initially, the, the, the industry is always uh, saying that the regulator is not playing ball, the regulator is being tough on them, but we need to understand how, why regulator behave like that, because they need to regulate. If yeah. something happened to your drone, it is, not some, it is not light aircraft. If light aircraft crash, the pilot is still there. If drone crash, where's the pilot? How can CM link the, the, the small aircraft to who own it? Mm. And how can the insurance be responsible in that? Right. So when we first started in 2018, we need to look at how can we convince CAM to look into this uh, to, so that they can be more adaptive uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the industry. So we started off with a drone testing zone in Cyberjaya in 2018. Even though it's not a full-fledged drone testing zone, we still need to request for a permit from CAM, but at least we managed to look, uh, we managed to assist the, the drone player. Well, the drone is thriving in, in that type of environment where they started their company in Cyberjaya. Now they have their Drone Academy Asia mm -hmm. to look at how can they train. Again, as what uh, Dato Ganesh mentioned earlier, to have somebody that is a pilot but not really understand how to operate a drone is kind of dangerous because it's two separate things. It is but not the same. Right. You may know the, the, the safety aspect of the light aircraft, but you may not know what you need to do in case of emergency when you start operating the drone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to, to echo back what uh, previous uh, government told, told Futurize last time. How can, uh, when our ministers start going out to China, start going out to all the developed countries, it is easy mm -hmm. for the repetitive, dangerous, and boring work being taken over by the robot and even for drone. So when, when we take that, uh, that situation back in Malaysia, 
we know that one the industry need to to be ready yes they are ready but the they need to really understand why this the regulation is there the regulation may be archaic in a way but the the, the regulator is willing to listen and willing to change mm. uh, cm proven to be one of the most supportive regulator in this area where they are willing to review i know akila is smiling uh, okay. they willing to review they even send uh, captain akila to 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 learn on how europe did thing because we always uh, benchmark ourselves this is typical of how government work they always benchmark with their neighbors they always benchmark with the developed country so we may not be far off from the the global regulation as what Safan mentioned mm-hmm. malaysia is not the only country that is facing this almost everyone mm-hmm. uh singapore is doing that uh, as well so malaysia malaysia adoption of drone uh, since the uh, past two three years is remarkable mm-hmm. earlier we can only see people like tnb and petronas uh, can can afford uh, implement and afford now you can see the small holder in alusta using drone to use pesticide right. so i think i think the industry start to know uh, to to get the hang of how uh, how can we get uh, in a good book of cm so you need to have sora you need to really understand what they want it's always about safety aspect uh, of of the public right. so from futurist point of view it's always that uh, we always uh, promote the the three things like uh, the regulation intervention how can we deploy it in the more safer environment and with with the first two box tick then we can see the creation of innovation ecosystem the one that safwan mentioning uh, the one that uh, farhan mentioned earlier be it 50 billion be it uh, 125 uh, uh, million us dollar the first two regulation intervention need to be there and the deployment need to 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 happen so everyone here is looking and supporting that the whole ecosystem need to be implemented in a safe and conducive environment i think that's from me thanks omar thanks thanks azrul okay uh, right so next one let's go and talk to the talent development side and and i know don't have to tell me that the talent is is the biggest pain point everyone is facing not just in drone in any advanced technology so uh, datuk sri ganesh uh, uh, looking at the time as well uh, say in in 2 minutes what will be your major pain points <laughs> i know i'm i'm putting you in a corner but what will be your major pain points and then you know what what are the strategies that uh, you have undertaken to actually overcome that yeah, i would say in 2 minutes all right what I, what i what i was thinking is simple see we are trapped in this hype of drone technology at the beginning right good mm-hmm. people like futurize uh, iib and and i think sapwan magic and all these people have actually put it objectively to to the players out there uh, they advocate the drone technology itself to the users right the challenge that we face or the talent development side we face is that people are trapped with the hype of drone technologies everything is about flying right when it comes to drone technology okay somebody is going to fly and then we're going to see a lot of drones in the, in the sky actually as i mentioned earlier the drone itself is going to be the field application itself only going to be 20% mm-hmm. the rest of the 80% is about what you're going to do with the data exactly. so if you are still stuck with that hype and trying right. to enter into the market by by people commercializing this hype then we are going nowhere right, right? So what we did was we work along with a lot of agency to create awareness. I think technology we cannot wait for the government to spear it. It's the industries that need to spear it. So we go around do our awareness program. We put through the the program in structured manner. After many years, thank God CM has come up with a proper structure thing that we need to adhere. So by when you you see CM takes a consultative approach. I would say that it's the biggest solution here. you know when it comes to talent development when they do consultative approach they mean they listen to us you know they require i know they are rigid because they are very much uh, the the safety the flag people of the, the the industry but what i'm trying to say is that with their consultative approach we can actually dynamically uh, produce the right talent with the safe measures and so forth so the noise will disappear one day you know those noise will try to create that we're going to create drone talent by just simply flying a drone 
right? It's not about toys. It's about safety. It's about commercialization, right? How you're going to do that. And um, we work along with agency, with consultancy approach. Example, we all talk about drone in the skies, you know, flying and all that. You see, when we imagine a phone, right? You might imagine a different phone and I might imagine different, but we all are the same objectives. When it comes to drone, this is what's happening. Uh, people in the warehouse and uh, confined space, they have a different understanding of drone itself, how it works, all right? So wider talent uh, development should take place in this kind of areas. So when we, when we focus on this area, right, we create more specialized talents in this area, which, at, which adhering to the requirement by CAM. People like Futurize, people like Iskanda Investments and so forth, and IIB, DRZ Zone and all that, has actually put these people in a proper perspective. Example, DRZ has given us an opportunity put for, for a right facility and testing site, right? So this ensures safety. And they are also working on the UTM itself. So they are spearheading this, right? So that we don't get into the hype of this drone technology and create the wrong talent. So as I tell you earlier, I have told you the challenges as well. And I told you how different agencies have put things in order and we're working along. Don't worry. Uh, CAM has actually uh, put across all the right uh, method in place. So those who comes out from RPTO talents, they are the right person for the industry. And I'm sure that they have also taken into account what's the industry requirement and so forth. That is for me. I think I talked it within two minutes. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Dato. Uh, great. Uh, Captain Ling, from, from your side? Hi. I, uh... I know things are still new with, on, on your side, but what, what are the challenges that you have seen so far? I think uh, most of our guests here have also mentioned some of the challenges which we also face. Uh, but on our side, uh, I must say, fortunately, we are quite uh, fluid in terms of adapting new ideas and uh, new uh, technologies for that matter. So I, I, I would say uh, we're actually excited. Uh, most of our guys are actually excited and looking forward. Uh, at, in fact, every other day, we are we are the sort of digging out and discovering new things. So one thing I want to emphasize a lot is uh, we are actually very grateful, very, very happy that uh, we, we started at, at the right time, I would say, where CM published the CAD. So it is very helpful for us, you know, people from the airline, <laughs> we, we generally follow uh, whatever is uh, being published in the regulations. So that makes our life actually quite easy, uh, much better. So because we are new, so we have no no... Uh, not much guidance so that becomes our sort of like uh, our like uh, to a guiding light guiding star so we follow and refer to the CAD a lot and we also have a lot of uh, discussion and we also get a lot of guidance uh, from Captain Aquila and his team and also the rest of the place as well also from uh, Magic as well a lot of guidance and support so we're actually very, very happy and very grateful and uh, of course, uh, at the same time, we also, uh, like what uh, Dato has mentioned, the ultimate aim is to provide a safe and a good environment to, for the industry, for the new talents that we are going to uh, churn out. So uh, that is not too much of a challenge for us, uh, but uh, it is something that we are excited and working uh, together towards. That's, that's from our side. Yeah. Right. Thanks, thanks, Captain Ling. Okay, so now let's hear from the service provider side, the solution providers, you know, what are the challenges they see when talking to potential adopters. Uh, Dr. Lee, uh, two minutes, please. Hello. So yes, of course, when we, we want to adopt drone technology, when new businesses want to adopt new, uh, when new businesses want to adopt drone technology, the first thing they will ask is, it will, will it be very, difficult to operate and what happens when accidents you know accidents occur and then what will happen next what will who is what about the accountability so that is a few key questions that people will ask accountability being one of the most important one and where can i get insurance so there are a couple of things like that that people will want to know and for the public infrastructure wise for example drone delivery we're going, to, we're going to run drone delivery tests, so people might be aware that drones will be flying across their homes or, or um, uh, um, uh, across their compounds, and that may cause some noise, so there will be some noise pollution. People will be, people may be upset about that and also some privacy issues. And, and there are also concerns about hacking, where cybersecurity can be one, one key issue. 
I believe that everything, uh, all all locks are meant to be broken. So if you have if you have a a strong encryption, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean a thing. People will still try to hack it or try to break it just so that they can gain control and then to show the world that they are uh, they are capable of doing things like that. Cyber security, yes, and also people are also very concerned about flying drones in the illegal areas, like such as near the airports. Trafficking drugs across prisons that is happening. Yeah, we see news about that. So a couple of um, th th There are still a lot of things that we need to address because it's very difficult to track Especially the small ones. Yeah, there's a small below one kilogram or two kilogram great very small micro UAVs micro aerial vehicles. Those are very very versatile. They hide very nicely in the backpack and those are very dangerous, can be used for a lot of malicious purposes. Whereas the big ones, such as the agriculture drones, where they, 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 are, they, are, they are big, they are very visible, so it's more, it's more challenging to use them in a malicious way. So I say the businesses who wants to um, get into drone technology can come and talk to us. We have a certain, we, we have some thoughts and also some structure about how to how to manage the drone fleets and, and also for, for towns, we can always look for uh, drone pilot schools, which is well regulated by CAN, who issues the RPTO. And I guess that will be, I, I think I, I may have missed some of the challenges that I've not addressed, but that's uh, some of the points that comes up to my head. Okay, right. Thanks, thanks, Dr. Lee. Uh, so I'm mindful of the time. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just quickly go through some of the questions that's uh, been posted. Uh, so there's a question about, is there a common place where training programs are listed for drone drone tech related uh, uh, programs? Is it something that, that CM actually lists and these are the ones that certify or is it just listed by the respective service providers? Is there a central location where people interested in learning can, can, can uh, come and have a look? I know to open right. the question. Thanks, Omar. Um, okay, so there are no approved remote pilot training organization as of yet, but we do foresee um, perhaps one or two establishments of RPTO uh, by end of the year. Um, let me give you some of the figures. There are at the moment 21 applications for RPTO up to date. Ooh. Five um, are in the midst of starting or filling up the form. And then 10 are already in the pre-application phase, which is the first phase. And six has advanced to the second phase. And we could see out of that six, two applicants are already going to be advancing to the third phase soon. Total, there are around five phases. So we expect by a year end, hopefully, we would have a few. And definitely, we will list this out on our CM website. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, next question is, uh, what are some of the available drone tech uh, test sites in Malaysia? So I heard about Iskanda. I'm sure we have something in Cyberjaya. Is there anywhere else? Yeah, this is uh, to Captain Akila or open? Open, open, open. Open. I think uh, from a sandbox perspective, you know, we started off with Cyberjaya. Yeah. And then uh, we branched off. We look at the DRZ Iskanda. Yeah. And then uh, we have other sandbox sites where drones are being used and tested, like uh, in our Felda Mampaga sandbox for agriculture. Yeah, and we're working with Air Asia as well. We're looking at uh, e-commerce and delivery, urban drone delivery. Yeah, well, and uh, and uh, we're also looking into uh, TPM. Yeah, because uh, for your info, for for all the audience information as well. Uh, Magic and TPM, we are in the process of uh, consolidation and um, there is going to be um, an area dedicated in uh, TPM as well, starting with five acres first. Yeah, just to let you know, the entire TPM is about 640 plus uh, 100 uh, uh, acres, yeah? So that, that's a huge piece of land, but we'll start with five acres first. So that there are going to be a lot of areas where we can test and a lot of new ones as well, because it depends on what you are testing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Thank can I add on? Yes, please. Yes, I have yes. a feeling that the Captain Aquila <laughs> will join in as well. <laughs> because you know, uh, someone is getting excited. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. 
<laughs> no, it's not that. I, I would like to share um, if there are any applicants who would like to apply for um, testing sites. Um, CM actually do not approve a testing site. We uh -huh. approve the operation of that testing, but we can gazette and state that there would be a testing area happening there. Okay. What you would require is you would require to send us a risk assessment and send it to our CEO. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Soma. That, that was uh, interesting. So, Soma, if, yes. if I can, briefly, yes. right? Uh, yeah. So, so I, I think on, on two points, uh, one is on the test side and, uh, and on the talent as well. Uh, so, actually, there, there are, at the moment, I think there are organizations that provide uh, drone training awareness uh, programs. So I think if you can refer to uh, Datuk Sri Ganesh programs, uh, the Asia Drone, IoT Academy, and, and I think uh, in MDEX website, I think there, there are a few lists of uh, drone uh, institutions, providers, which mm -hmm. uh, all of them are, are, are not an RPTO at the moment. Uh, okay. But for, for, for your information, if, if you are interested to learn, mm -hmm. I think that there are a few programs out there. I think you can get in touch with, with any of us, you know, uh, MDEX, or mm -hmm. the RZ Iskandar, or Datuk Siganes, or Magic. We would be happy to introduce you to the right programs that you would need. So be it drone pilot, uh, drone analyst, drone engineers, mm -hmm. uh, drone programmers. So there, there are a lot of other things out there aside from being a drone pilot only. And I, and I think uh, probably in, in a different session, uh, and, 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 and just to share, uh, we, we've got a lot of content on, on this this kind of pro, uh, information as well. We will okay. share that in the chat box in your Hubila platform, and probably please. that's something that you guys can refer to. Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Yes, let's take advantage of that. One final question before uh, from the floor. Uh, I think it's already. I think some of you guys already addressed it. What are the quick win or focus areas uh, in terms of drone tech adoption in Malaysia? I think uh, there was mention of agriculture, plantation. Uh, the utility sector, the, the, the telcos and the energy. Is there any other sector in Malaysia that you think is, is mature or is ready uh, for drone tech? Open question. Can I suggest? Yes, Tato. Okay, in terms of maturity, uh, yeah, I will not get there, but uh, I would say uh, the UTM market in Malaysia, unmanned traffic management market, will mm -hmm. be at an exciting inflection point soon, right? Because you see, when there is a lot of drones out there, ecosystem, you know, everywhere, test site, when uh, also CM regulate these people to fly and so forth. So I can see inflection point soon, not only because of its high growth prospects, but also because companies can actively work with regulators over the next several years to set standards and shape the industry's future. So UTM is, is another market that we should look into. Okay. And of course, leadership teams that take the right steps to capitalize of this critical window will position themselves to control the skies, right? So I will put it that in that window. I don't know how much CM will agree to this, but I think UTM is something that in need. But UTM, not necessarily UTM for the entire Malaysia, for a particular test site. Example for DRC. DRC is in cooperation with uh, Garuda Robotics to set up a UTM for that particular area. So anything on test site safety will be taken into consideration. Right? Okay. So this is my from my point of view. Yeah. Thanks, Dato. Uh, anyone? Any other panelists? Any other areas or vectors or sectors or verticals that is really... I may... Yeah, yes. yeah, I may add a bit, uh, Soma. I think looking at the trend, looking at the movement of people, whether to you know, into green tech and mobility, because uh, Malaysia or even being a developed country, mobility is one of the pain point of, uh, of the country. Mm -hmm. we look, we, I think we need to look seriously at the development of uh, urban air mobility. Singapore tested it uh, early this year and last year. Uh, we have few companies approaching us. We, we're looking at how uh, Subang Airport uh, is looking at to becoming a hub uh, for a, uh, a boutique kind of travel from uh, KL, KLIA, Subang uh, route mm -hmm. and uh, redevelopment of that area I think going to be uh, help with the urban air mobility because when we're looking at the land transportation I think is a bit congested right. so uh, Europe is taking that seriously now they're looking at uh, they're saying that by three to five years time it's going to be uh, mainstream Singapore is talking about that as well I think we cannot be left behind. Uh, we need to look at an inclusive uh, regulatory framework so that uh, it's not for 
a commercialization rollout. But again, it has to be uh, like what uh, Dr. Ganesh mentioned earlier. Once we have an, a UTM, and UTM can support that development of that technology because it, it's going to be safer, it's going to be uh, more approachable on, on how we, we approach that. Tech. Thanks, Omar. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm down to my final question here. I actually had my own question, but... There was Sorry, a question. Omar. Yes. Just, just, just before that, I think it's, it's important to state because uh, Azro mentioned about the, you know, uh, Subang and whatnot. Um, uh, the NASA Grand Challenge, uh, and Craig, you may correct me if I'm wrong, uh, states that by 2028, um, you guys need to look up uh, UML, air, urban, air, mobi air, urban air mobility. Yeah, We're looking at, uh, uh, um, in 2028, at UML4. What is UML4? We're talking about medium density and complexity operation. We're looking at, uh, uh, it is anticipated, 100 simultaneous operation Expanded networks, including high capacity UAM ports. Yeah, mm -hmm. many UAT, UTM inspired ATM services available. Simplified vehicle operation for credit low visibility operation. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Yeah, um, this you guys can look it up. Uh, UML and, and NASA, and uh, I think this is where you know, help us in terms of vision the future. But yep, thanks. Thank, thank, thanks, Afwan. So last thanks, question. Can what I ask as well? Go ahead, go ahead, Okay. All right. First, I'd like to add on to what Datuk Sri said. Uh, yes, I, we strongly do agree that we foresee there's going to be a um, um, high-rise and UTM. And we also, the UTM system is in the, will be open-ended. And one of the systems or the characteristic of the UTM is that they would have to have a functionality that it would allow API to log on. So you can have your own UTM system, but it would have to be under the, underneath the umbrella of the UTM that is from CM. Okay, that's number one. Number two, now our topic now has changed to what Azro has said about UAM. Uh, I, I agree totally, wonderful um, the challenges for UAM. I would like to explain a bit about urban air mobility and the challenges that we have to see because that there is a significant collaboration between a much broader range of stakeholders would be required to be looked into, such as individual aircraft operation management, what if the UA is privately owned? Let's just say it is SOMAS Kereta Terbang. Yeah. Uh, how is it going to be owned and managed? Uh, would it be you flying or would it be you hiring somebody else to fly it for you? And then after that, the airspace management, is it just via UTM or would it also be add-on in and integrated with the um, current aircraft um, air management? Uh, and then what is the policy decision making? For the space, would it be separated or integrated? And then who bears the responsibility for private use of specific operations and the routing? Are the highway ke, atau boleh cross saja ke? We don't know. Right. And then after that, how about the vertiports? Would you able to be landing in your house or mm. only selected car park locations? Right. Don't know. Right. And then after that, whether a clearance from other government agencies be required? Also, so there is going to be so much um, significant collaboration between a much broader range of stakeholders requires to be there. But agree as well, we got to look into that because that is definitely their future. Um, but I strongly believe, and even from when we created these three directives, we realized that we really needed to work together and create a multi-agency committee uh, with everyone that holds the legislations on UAS. Why we needed to do that is because we knew that in the future also coming up with the UTM, we need to create a one-stop center so that it will reduce the application processing time. Yes. Uh, so that we are able to give you a uh, more facilitative and bukannya kena pergi meet satu orang, satu orang, satu orang, satu orang, pasu baru hujung. And then you punya kerja pun actually dah lambat sangat. Oh, so it's there. Go CM, go. <laughs> okay. Um, and another thing that I would like to add on is that from our perspective, as a regulator for civil aviation, we are only responsible in assessing the competency of the product and operators, but mm. it is up to the industry to mm. prove and show us that we are capable of doing that. And we strongly believe the main key idea as the industry progress, that the regulators, with an S, yeah, and industry should work shoulder to shoulder in ensuring that we are ready to take any ambitious vision possible, be it UAM, drone delivery, whatever. That's a quotable statement there, Soma. Quote that last statement, huh? and, <laughs> yes. and, 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 and have your next session. <laughs> we, we planned that, definitely. So, uh, as I was saying, I actually had a last question uh, planned out, but I actually had a very fantastic question from the floor, which is very relevant. 
uh, because they just announced a new cabinet. So the question is, so I'm going to uh, ask each of you to spend about 30 seconds to wrap things up with this answer to this question. What are the aspirations of the panelists looking forward from the new government to benefit the drone industry? Go, Captain Akila. Oh. Why is it always me first? <laughs> Ladies, I'll let Safwan go first. Thank you. Okay, so I was about to so say I can have five seconds to think. No. Oh, okay. All oh, right. So, so I, th I think at the, at the end of the day, whoever is in power, yeah, I think it's uh, we we are, we want to do good for the for the whole nation. Yeah, we want to be able to bring high quality, high skilled jobs. Isn't that all, all what we want? Yeah. At the same time as well, we want a strong economy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An economy which is not based on conventional or traditional factors of production. We want it to be uh, enabled by the fourth IR. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, everyone out there, regulators, governments, new ministers, we welcome you. But, you know, um, we may be looking at about 50B as mentioned just now. Yeah. Opportunity by 2030. An opportunity as well to to lift up all the the frameworks, the roadmaps that we have regarding technology for the country, and the the time is now, the opportunity is now. The people is here, everybody is here in the panel. People are listening in, yeah, in the grassroots they are ready. So let's Good go. Day. Good here. Anyone else wants to uh, answer the question? What's the aspiration that you're looking forward from the new government? My aspiration would be yes, keep sir. the previous initiative going. An initiative keep changing, it affects the industry, you know, private industry especially. For government agencies, it's fine totally, they just have to change the direction. But mm. all the previous initiatives are good initiatives. All of us here are some or other involved in some cross vertical initiative in road tech. Keep it going, support okay. those industry players. Uh, do not change the direction now, because when the goalposts change, then to solve for everybody. Right. So let's keep it going. Uh, okay. As I say, we, our, on talent development, RPTO is the goal, right? And keep it going without having a different direction in, in that thought. And in terms of talent development, make it inclusive uh, to, to areas which can create value jobs, right? Okay. Uh, this is what uh, my inspiration would be. Thank you, Dato. Ma, okay. if, if, if I can, last one. Yes, for okay, Then the soft one can go. <laughs> I, I also want to go, I'm ready now. But it's okay, Farhan, go first. Thank you. Uh, okay. I, I think previous uh, government or current government, the, the drone industry cuts across all these various industries. So ministry-wise, uh, Ministry of, of Transport, Ministry of Communication, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, everyone will uh, benefit if the industry uh, grows. And, and I think this is where I think uh, agencies like MAGIC, uh, Futurize and, 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 and MDAC, you guys can play the role you know, to rope in all these different different ministries to ensure that everyone is on the same page. And, 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 to, and, and for, for my last word, so to, to, to the industry players out there, you know, the, the startups, companies, you know, if you have a dream to fly, come to us, the RZ Iskandar, and we will help to elevate you to reach for the sky. Thank you. Thank you, Varun. Captain? Captain no. Thank you. Okay. So I would like to say that since CM is a regulatory responsibility for the technical matters and we are supposed to look into the aviation safety, security and efficiency. So, and we also have this thing called National Aviation Safety Plan, which is a master planning document contains all the strategic direction of a state, okay, for the management of aviation safety. So I would like to say that, like what Safwan said, um, it, um, Siapa-siapa pun dia ada di, di atas. Uh, kita regulator, we are committed and dedicated and ready to facilitate the drone industry into a more advanced and complex US operation, but without jeopardizing the security and safety of local aviation industry and general public. Thank Terima you. Kasih. Thank you, Captain. Anyone else? Uh, Craig, just for context, we they, they just announced a new cabinet this morning, so hence the, the question from the floor. Just, just the context for you. I think for me, for me, for me, it's the same as what Datuk Ganesh mentioned earlier. Uh, it has to be continued. Uh, whatever initiative that currently is going uh, ongoing, it has to be continued. And do trust the industry. They know what they they, they do best and uh, support them uh, as much as we can. Okay. So that's about it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Azro. Uh, Captain Ling, any anything anything from you? Any wish list from you? 
Um, I think similar to what everyone have, has mentioned, so a lot of initiative, a lot of good effort has been put in, uh, including uh, from, from the providers of the industry, uh, from, from the technology and also from the regulators. Uh, for us, uh, really, uh, it's all about working together to achieve everyone's goal. Uh. So for us, it, new government, old government, whatever it is, as long as we work together, I think we'll be able to achieve uh, what everyone uh, desires. Yeah. Good, good advice, good advice. Uh, Dr. Lee, how about you? Any wish list from you? Well, we wish to see more talents coming up. It's yes. a little bit tough to get good aerospace engineers nowadays. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lee. And, and Craig, I didn't want to leave you out what what is the wish list that you would like to see? <laughs> yeah, Malaysia. Come to Malaysia, Craig. Yeah. yeah. Having just read all, all the policy, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I would just say that um, any government initiative should be focused on the sectors that have a combination of most potential for growth, mm -hmm. a low to medium saturation of drones right now. There's no point in focusing on oil and gas because it's right. a saturated market. Focus where the potential is. And also focus on sectors that can actually use technology that is legal to fly right now. Mm. Uh, you know, it's great to focus on future technology, uh, but it shouldn't be all of your effort. I recommend 80, 20, 80 percent use proven technology in sectors that will grow, grow that have low to medium maturity uh, for drones. And that's how you'll uh, drive your economy forward. So uh, that's my generic advice. Okay, thank, thank you. Great. And thank you, everyone. Uh, we've had a very engaging panel discussion. I just wish we had more time, but we don't, but as, as Safwan was saying, maybe we'll have another round one of these days. So let's 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 plan for that. Uh, thank you so much, especially thanks to, to Craig for actually joining us all the way from the UK. You can go back to, bit, to Craig after this. Uh, before we end, can we do a quick uh, group photo? I think the, the, the organizers uh, are in the background. So Ravina, can, can we do a quick uh, snapshot? Okay, uh, I'll do the countdown. I'm, a, I'm, I'm assuming someone and the background is going to take a photo, right? Uh, three, two, one. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, three, two, one. Okay, uh, and also a big thank you to the participants who have, who have joined us. Uh, we sincerely, you'll, uh, you that uh, we hope that you'll walk away from this webinar at Lighten and then ready to kickstart your drone tech uh, journey. Uh, please, please feel free to reach out to the the panelists or the organizations. Uh, here if you want to take your next step in adopting dro uh, uh, drone tech or drop us an email uh, at uh, uh, click.mdec.my uh, i'll just share it in the chat window so if you haven't uh, got the con contacts for others please drop us an email we'll put you in touch with the respective uh, panelists or the organization okay once again thank you thank you very much everyone uh, have a good day thank you bye thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you bye everyone Oh, Thank you, Soma, and to all our high flying panel members for that encompassing uh, discussion on drone tech, taking flight in boosting the digital economy. We'll now be moving forward to our next session of the day. It will begin very shortly. So do click join session and also complete the survey for each session for us to continuously serve you better. See you in a bit.